property. And do we have consent items? Uh, six, and side, uh, six and seven are up for consent. Uh, anybody object? If not, uh, Mr. Parks and I concur on those two items and would be happy to send them forward. Uh, so let's go back to item number one. Item number one is a motion, Rosendahl Reyes, Garcetti Corretz, relative to the request for the city attorney to report back in 45 days to explain the mechanisms necessary to enable the city's film permit process to require workplace safety in the production of adult films. Do we have any presentations on this? Good afternoon, Kimberly Mayer um, from the City Attorney's Office. We um, have not um, prepared our report on this. We're waiting for further direction either from this committee or council as a whole. Our preliminary research shows that we are likely preempted by um, state regulations, that Cal OSHA has the exclusive um, jurisdiction on this issue to enforce and investigate violations of the um, of the regulations. I'm sorry, ex exclusive? They have exclusive jurisdiction. That's our position so far. It looks like that we are, that lo any local ordinances passed to regulate this um, issue would be preempted by state law. Uh, where do we find exclusive jurisdiction? Well, um, does, does that apply to other workplace safety issues? It, do, it does. For most workplace um, safety issues, Cal OSHA is the exclusive remedy, is the exclusive body that investigates and enforces workplace safety. Hmm. Now, we could work with Film LA already has language that the city has approved that goes on their permits regarding um, the necessity to obey all state, federal, and local ordinances. We can work with Film LA to find some language that would be appropriate to put on the permit, something to the effect of including mm -hmm. Title VIII of the California Code of Regulations, which is the applicable section, or um, you know, some, some similar language mm -hmm. we could put on the permit. And if they violate that, mm -hmm. it, we would enforce it by pulling the permit. It would be an administrative process. I'm, I'm still blown away by the fact that, that you say Cal OSHA has exclusive uh, uh, powers. Well, do you have the, the exact reference? I do. I have um, some case law. Also, um, this is just our preliminary research. We were waiting for some further guidance to prepare our report. But um, what I found so far shows that we would be, that a local ordinance would be preempted by state law if the issue is deemed to be a statewide concern. Preemption occurs when there is a conflict between state and local law. A conflict exists if the local legislation duplicates, contradicts, or enters an area fully occupied by general law, either expressly or by le legislative implication. Here, Cal OSHA holds itself out as the exclusive body to enforce and investigate areas of workplace safety. So, um, well, that speaks to the the ordinance. That's correct. Um, does where does it speak to the enforcement? And um, Cal OSHA also is the sole. Well, body that's the reference that I'm um, concerned about. Right. I can get that language to you. It's Cal Cal OSHA holds itself out as the sole body to in, to enforce. Um, yes, I would like to see. Right. Well, that would be included in our report when we submit it. Okay. Um, okay. This is uh, obviously was brought to light by the uh, recent uh, um, news articles. Uh, but uh, <coughs> so you were saying uh, about the permit process. Um, that, there might be some. That's one option that we have. We can work. What with exactly? How would exactly would that work? Well, LAPD enforces the permit in an administrative fashion, so that if some terms and conditions of the permit are violated, the permit could be revoked. <clears throat> um, right now, there's language on the permit that states that the permit D agrees to comply with all applicable federal, state, and local laws, regulations, ordinances, and rules, mm -hmm. including all ap applicable federal and state requirements for workers' compensation insurance, 
we can work with FMLA to find some language to include um, a specific reference to Title VIII of the California Code of Regulations, which is the applicable area that regulates this. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we can we can add that specifically in. Also, I should add that on um, Cal OSHA has already ruled they're having hearings and Cal on this specific issue. And back in November, Cal OSHA determined that Title VIII was applicable to the use of condoms on the wear, on wearing at um, adult film filming sets. Right now, they're holding hearings to determine what, if anything, they're going to do to make the applicable suction more specific to condom use. Right now, the the title mm -hmm. is regarding barriers to protect people from bloodborne pathogens. So right now they're examining whether or not they will, they've already determined that their section is applicable to this. Right now they're, they're working out language to make it more specific. Okay. Um, I feel uh, that this committee is in a great position to deal with this issue because we have a former police chief and uh, a lawyer. Uh, but the... When I read the motion, it doesn't really speak to enforcement directly. Not directly, no. It, it speaks about mechanisms. And I don't see uh, the issuance of permit as an enforcement action. So I don't think that um, denying a permit because they're out of compliance with state law or revoking the permit, I don't see that as an enforcement action. No, well, it depends on we, I, it, it's our position that if Cal OSHA has exclusive jurisdiction, then we don't know what body within the city of Los Angeles would enforce. Whoever issues the permit. It's well, not an enforcement action. It's just a question of whether you can issue a permit or not. Right. So if, if uh, Film LA issues the permit, right. uh, who, who issues it? The city of Los Angeles. Oh, PD issues the permit. But that's not enforcement. They're just pulling back the permit. That's right. So how is that an enforcement action? And how is that contrary with the law? It's not. I, 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 think, I think that there was some discussion before the motion was made whether or not the city of Los Angeles could, in, could enforce the actual regulation. Right. And okay, I don't see that in the right. motion. And maybe that was in the media, but right. that's not before my committee. Right. My committee is, is simply looking at the issue to explain the mechanisms necessary to enable the city's film permit process to require workplace safety. I well, we can we can issue that. Talk report. about enforcement. Okay. Um, and I really, you know, I think um, the public safety aspect of this is uh, uh, paramount, uh, and. Uh, and I think we have a responsibility to not turn a blind eye to this. Uh, as as uh, uncomfortable as the subject is with folks, if if uh, we uh, we can avoid a spread of of uh, AIDS or or at least um, reduce the potential for that, uh, and we have the power to do so, I think we need to do it. And uh, um, because the state just doesn't have the resources. I mean, they're, they're not going to do it. And if, if we don't do it, nobody's going to do it. So um, so I think uh, as a courtesy to uh, uh, Mr. Rosendahl, I, I very much want to have that, that conversation uh, and uh, uh, see if there's a way we can accomplish uh, the ultimate uh, goal to just get people to abide by the law. Uh, and in this particular case, it's unusual because we, we can't use the, the, uh, our enforcement powers, but, but if LAPD is issuing the permits, then they can also revoke them, I would think, without that being defined as an, uh, uh, an enforcement action. Um, but in any case, you're going to report back to us in 45 I will days. The back. vote today would merely... Uh, support that report back. We would we would add uh, that this should be double referred to the Public Safety Committee. I would think. Uh, 
I don't know. Mr. Park? Yeah, I think so. I think it should go to public safety as well. Uh, so you will have a report back in 45 days? Yes. Okay. With, um, I'm assuming we send this back to council for concurrence? Yes. Okay. Then let's let's. Uh, I'm 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 in favor of that. Mr. Kokorian, did you have any comments? Um, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm fine with uh, hearing a report back. Um, I have some. I'm certainly very supportive of the underlying policy uh, that this tries to address. I do have some policy concerns about jurisdictional issues and whether or not it's appropriate uh, for. Uh, during the permitting process, whether it's legal or not, whether it's even appropriate uh, during the permitting process for the city to become uh, de the de facto enforcement arm here. because I, and, and I would hope that the report would include some discussion of the potential slippery slope that this would put the city on if uh, film permits uh, were conditioned on compliance with any number of different state laws. Um, or workplace safety issues or uh, wage and hour conditions or many, many other things that uh, the city is not in the business of enforcing. Um, so I, I, I hope that the discussion in the report back will include the precedential impact that this could have in, in a variety of other areas as well. It will. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just ask one thing. Uh, back in um, 80, I'm sorry, uh, 2004, uh, there was a council motion that went forward on a similar issue, and at that time, both the state and the county believed that they did not have the authority to uh, cause uh, uh, barriers to be used uh, in this industry. And so, I would like to make sure that we did uh, a motion that asked either the state or the county to seek any administrative or legislative uh, support for that. The number is 04-0002 S97. And at the time, we were also working with a piece of legislation, AB 2798 from Leslie. And so if you can look at those two items and see how that might configure into this motion. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then with that, this item moves forward with uh, a recommendation for support. Item number two. Item number two is a motion to call in the bonds relative to the review of existing food service contracts to determine how food service costs for film productions can be reduced at city facilities and develop policies and contractual guidelines for future food service contracts. Please. Um, yes, John Wickham with the Office of the Chief Legislative Analyst. In um, the course of our conversations with uh, location managers over the last few years, we've found that one of their concerns regards the uh, food service providers at various city facilities. There are a number of city facilities, such as the, um, uh, the observatory, Griffith Park Observatory, that have um, food service contracts to operate food services at their at their sites. And a lot of, most of these contracts have exclusivity agreements that require that no one may bring in any food from the outside, that the only food service can be provided by that contractor at that site. Well, the, the productions, the film productions, they have food services in two ways. One is to actually provide meals, and the other is the craft services, they're just snacks and drinks and such. And when they're purchasing those services from our, these contractors, you know, a Coke, a can of Coke will cost eight bucks. Well, they can, you know, the food, the, the film companies can go and they can get that much more affordably. Um, since these are contracts, there are ways possibly that we can, insert, you know, create city policies that provide some flexibility to the film companies um, in terms of these services and in finding food service that's affordable. So um, the motion would direct the CLA and CAO to talk to the city departments, work out how those policies could be developed and, and work to make sure that future food service contracts have provisions that help out the, um, the uh, film companies that are shooting at, at city facilities. Mr. Kukorian? Well, I think it's a very good summary. It's a straightforward issue. Um, we've made great steps uh, through the work of this committee. Uh, and and many of the initiatives that you've put forward, Mr. Chair, in uh, trying to make the city 
a more welcoming place for the film industry. This is just another one of those small steps in correcting uh, an aggravation that uh, many, I think, producers have when they want to use uh, our facilities as a location, and then they find this added expense, which is really entirely unnecessary for them to incur. So. Uh, that's the purpose of this motion, and uh, I understand that already a number of city facilities have started to change the existing policies uh, to allow greater flexibility uh, for uh, people shooting on locations. Is that, is that correct? Um, that's what I understand. The convention center, for example, is one of these facilities, and they've indicated that craft services um, is in particular one area where the, food, the production companies can bring in their own food. So. Uh, the only thing I would like to add uh, is uh, a report back to this committee. Um, what would be an appropriate time frame? Uh, 45 days. Fine. Okay. Uh, otherwise, it won't get done. I'm committing the CAO <laughs> to that, but no one back there screaming at me. So. Okay. Um, we have no cards on that item uh, either, so uh, we uh, are sending that matter on to council. With, with our approval. Item number three. <coughs> Item number three is a motion, West and Cardenas, relative to efforts in reducing gang violence and improving the community's quality of life when filming occurs in gang reduction, youth development, des designated neighborhoods. I understand that uh, Film LA has met with uh, councilmen uh, or the, the council members and that this item has been resolved to their satisfaction that um, Mr. Paul, uh, Mr. Audley, can you, <laughs> Mr. Paul? <laughs> oh, you love that one. Uh, if if you could just give us a brief synopsis of uh, how this matter has been resolved. Immediately after we saw the motion uh, come forward, I met with uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, Mayor Guillermo Cespedes, who is the head of the grid group to talk about what we could do to address the issues. And what we've agreed is they're going to supply us with overlay maps for these grid zones. We will notify his office at the time any filming is to take place in a grid zone. And their liaison then will work with us and that film company to make sure that the issues are clear in the community, that there are opportunities to provide service, and that everybody's clearly aware what is real. The catalyst for this really was a lot of rumor about what was going to happen in the film, and none of it was true. Um, and we think we can address that problem just by having that open link of communication where our system will automatically tell us we're in a grid zone and then we can work through that agency. Uh, yeah, um, quite frankly, uh, I have a grid zone. I have two grid zones in the San the only two grid zones in the San Fernando Valley. And uh, I think there might have been a lot of hyperbole attached to uh, the sentiment behind this uh, motion. I don't see it to be a problem, but if there's uh, more, the more information you have to make your assessment of what might be the needs, the better, and so I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think it'll create a good communication. So thank there. you for your responsiveness sure. to that. Uh, with that, uh, I would move that we receive and file this uh, with no objection, uh, and we can move on to item number four. Item number four is a motion, Gural Garcetti, relative to the recommendations proposed by the Los Angeles Economy and Jobs Committee to reform the city's relationship with the entertainment industry. I believe this, um, we ju we're just trying to clear the files here, and uh, this, this item has been dealt with through other actions, uh, and uh, it would be appropriate to receive and file this. Um, so without objection, this item is received and filed. Uh, Item number five. Item number five is a city clerk report relative to the ordinance of intention to disestablish the Chatsworth Business Improvement District. Good afternoon. Who's first? Please. Miranda Pastor, Office of the City Clerk. I'd like to point out that we have submitted a substitute report which uh, recommends um, allowing the Chatsworth Merchant Base bid to move forward for this year and not to disestablish the bid. We had submitted the disestablishment report at the um, introduction of a motion by Councilmember Smith that was introduced in the Council on 5-25-2010. Uh, and um, since that time, because we have reviewed the state law in terms of protests and notices. 
we noted that we only received 43 percent of the petitions and 50 percent of the weighted petitions were required. So we do not recommend that that did be disestablished. Maybe you could, as I always tell my staff, every item has a story. Maybe if you could tell us the story behind this, because uh, I'm, I'm not getting this is the first disestablishment action that we've ever considered, and I'd, I'd like to understand what are the dynamics that are getting us to this point. What we have, um, what we have received was um, some inquiries from our department to ask us the disestablishment procedure, and subsequently we had a um, a call from Councilmember Smith's office asking us or informing us that there were petitions that were being submitted. So council member, um, uh, one of the staff members told the community, some of the bid members community who was interested in disestablishing the bid that they would need to submit petitions. Now our process <coughs> is if you, um, our code section is during the protest time period as the bid is renewing or recon reconfirming the assessments, that's the time when the petitions can be submitted. So during that time, which was last year, May, when they were renewing, the um, council member introduced the motion uh, uh, with petitions that had been submitted. The um, reconfirmation was submitted to us and we forwarded a report allowing the reconfirmation. And during the protest time, 50% of, of the, uh, or petitions representing 50% of the assessments were not turned in. So that bid was approved by council. Um, in addition to that, on the same day, Councilmember Smith introduced a motion asking for disestablishment. And during the council member, I'm sorry, excuse me, during the council meeting, he met with the people who were in support who asked that it not be disestablished. And there was lots of talk back and forth, he including. He met with people who were in support of disestablishment? Uh, in support of continuing the bid. Oh, okay, okay. And those persons, um, he indicated that they should that there should be meetings out in the community in the bid to talk about what the problems were and to try and uh, resolve the problems. Um, on six nine, the uh, bid proponents, the uh, the board, the um, from the nonprofit association met with Smith's office, and they were in, and he was asking at that time if they had made um, a final resolution, but. As I just mentioned, during the council meeting on 525, they were under the impression that the council office was going to set up these meetings, and no meetings were set up. So on 6-9, when he met with them, they, uh, um, the council member instructed them to set up meetings, or at least to meet with the community to try and resolve the issues. And from what I understand, there was a meeting that was held on July 7th, and um, some uh, there was discussion about what they didn't like, what they did like from the opponents. They met with the opponents to discuss it. They also invited the proponents to join their board so that they could have an, a say on what they were doing. Um, and let me just step back. Basically what uh, the business improvement districts do is they try to present marketing opportunities or marketing uh, efforts in order to bring more people to their bid so that the businesses can have more commerce or be more successful. And in this case, um, there was talk about, um, you know, resolution, but I don't think that they came to a resolu resolution and none of the opponents um, decided to get on the board of the, the Chatsworth bid. The, um, so since that time, because the other one moved forward, it was adopted, we've moved forward with invoicing the assessments because it was not disestablished. We did not have the requisite petitions to disestablish it. However, in the meantime, we've been instructed by Councilmember Smith's office or requested to move this forward to committee. And since we are moving it forward to committee, we submitted a substitute report indicating that we recommend that the bid be allowed to continue for this year and if after such time they cannot resolve this issue or resolve their issues or come to some understanding, then it can be at the council's discretion or the bids they can submit petitions to the, the required 50% petitions to disestablish at that time. But at this point, the bid for fiscal year 2010-11 has been adopted by council and we are moving forward with the, our responsibilities in terms of invoicing. Okay, when is the... Uh 
When is the year up? The year will be up on the 31st of May of 2011. Okay. All right. We do have a number of cards on this item. Uh, was there another presentation? Um, do you have a card in? My card okay. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. If you have a card, you'll have an opportunity to speak. Do you have one of these? Okay. We'll, we'll get to you. Um, y yes, yeah, please. Uh, sorry. Uh, good afternoon, Council uh, Chairman Alarcon, uh, Councilman Parks, Councilman Kokorian. My name is John Lee. I'm the Acting Chief of Staff for Councilman Member Smith. Uh, just to give you a little um, history, I mean, Miranda was correct in her timeline of what happened in, with this disestablishment. Uh, early, or early in the year 2010, the opponents of, of establishment of the of the bid came to our office asking if there was a way to that they were not happy. Uh, shared their concerns with us. Uh, I, th I believe at that time our office told them the procedure of uh, capturing 50 percent of the uh, businesses in the area and turning those into the city clerk's office. Uh, when we received those petitions and they were being verified with the clerk's office, it was our understanding that we should move forward by introducing the motion to establish the bid in case those motions, uh, in case those uh, petitions were verified, and that way there would be some sort of process already in place so that the assessments weren't pl put in that order. Um, subsequently, we received, uh, the city clerk uh, let us know that they received different um, communications from some of the businesses that were on those petitions that said that they were no longer interested in, um, that they were not, um, for, I don't want to say misled, but they did not understand what they were signing or that some of the merchant-based, uh, since it's a merchant-based business, some of the uh, tenants felt that the person that signed onto the petition wasn't authorized by them, the owner of the business. And so we thought at that time we asked the city clerk to verify and some of the businesses were, weren't even in the, the actual district. So the city clerk felt at that time that they did not reach the threshold of 50 percent. So as subsequently we've been talking with the city clerks on how to move forward with this and since we thought that the assessment should move forward, uh, they were they were assessed uh, for this current year. Right. And so we do we do agree with the city clerks that this that this year at this time, since they did not reach that threshold, that the bid not be disestablished for this year, but also that the that the uh, opposition to the business improvement district be given some additional information, a, a clear information by this by this committee on how to proceed for next year if they do wish to disestablish this. And okay. our, their recommendation is the 50 percent of the revenue. Um, we've discussed this with them. We wanted some clarification why it was 50 percent of the revenue, not 50 percent of the actual businesses that they would have to receive petition from, but that at that time, if they received that petition, we would support the... Is, uh, is the city attorney uh, working with you on this? Yes. Is we, that, they're, is that, they're not here, but... They're not here? Uh, our representatives, we check with them, but I also have a copy of the law right here, if you... The what? I have a copy of the Streets and Highways Code that governs the... Pro the uh, the notices and the <laughs> you don't want me to interpret it. <laughs> we, we want we want a lawyer to do I that. I read that but part <laughs> of it if you'd like me to read. No, it. let me let me uh, let me ask a couple of questions. Number one, what is the term uh, of the bid that was approved? What is the the length? Oh, the oh one year. It's so the, when they voted for the bid, it was only a one year. Yeah, action. merchant uh, for merchant based bids, they reconfirm their assessments every year. Oh, every year. They, so okay. one year. With okay. the property-based bids, they can renew for five-year periods or ten years or smaller lengths of time. Okay. And um, uh, so does the council office uh, concur with the city clerk's office that the 50 percent uh, threshold was not met? Yeah. We, you know, we rely on the city clerk to verify those different uh, okay. signatures. And from that time, we also received letters from different businesses saying that they misunderstood what they were okay. signing. So we don't believe that they met that 50 percent threshold. That's mm -hmm. why we agree with the city clerk's report to not just establish, just establish this year, yeah. but, you know, we're here in committee today. To I just, that was a yes? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> the uh, other question I have, uh, in the original vote for the bid, what, what was the uh, percentage in support? 
Well, with this is a merchant-based bid, it right. doesn't require a vote. The property-based ones require the Prop 218 vote. I understand all that. Just so there's not what was the percentage of, of people that supported it? That's what I'm saying. There's no, there's no vote. How, then how did you come to the conclusion that it should come into existence? Basically, they are introduced by, like, maybe some components from the community come in. They work with us. They may hire. The council member introduces a motion to establish. Right. Exactly. And that's all it takes. Uh, well, then we do. There has to be a management district plan. Um, well, no, no, I understand that, but but the the council member supports it. But the exactly. the uh, there is no formal uh, vote of the businesses that that okay. will participate. Exactly. Holly Wall yeah. cut off is that the city clerk is done by majority protest. So after a notice of hearing is sent to each one of the businesses, they have an opportunity to protest. If we do not receive that level of protest, then it is deemed approved. Okay. Okay. So they have to, they they have the opportunity to weigh in. Uh, yes, they do. But it has to be a majority. Protest. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, before I ask for the public comments, um, let me just say that um, uh, this, it, it appears to me that this is driven by the council office. Um, and, and I have bids in my district as well, and, and we're all very familiar with the process. Um, but if the original implementation and creation of the bid uh, is, is uh, under control of the council district, in essence, with the approval of the city council, uh, because there is no uh, voting process uh, per, per se. Um, I'm really going to rely on the council member in terms of what I want to do, um, because, uh, as I said, because there's no there's no vote uh, of the of the businesses. Um, it's a tricky one because. Um, it's essentially uh, uh, to participate in the bid is essentially uh, a fee for service process. You're, you're paying for certain services that are voted on by the bid, and and uh, and yet businesses. Uh, I'm sure the opponents are concerned that they're not getting they're not getting their money's worth, and uh, and and so um, so. But but I want those who are protesting to know that that we've got to rely on uh, on our colleague to have their understanding of why they introduced uh, why they introduced and supported and at this point you're saying you concur with the city clerk to keep this for until May right because the yeah. okay so that's so I just want you to know that the, the council members uh, action in this particular case because there was no original vote and the council member took the action. It weighs heavily, okay? So with that, I'm going to uh, ask for public comment, unless there's comments from uh, my committee members. Uh, so let's go with uh, David uh, Globisher. Okay, I'm just going to go in order of the cards. If you want to speak, speak. If you don't want to speak, I'll go to the next person. Then, <laughs> okay, okay, you can't you can't pass your time on to somebody else. You either speak or don't speak, and she has an opportunity to speak as well. Uh, first of all, with regard to this calculating this 50 percent of the vote, whatever, I've heard many different versions of how that 50 percent number is calculated. I have not seen one code section or one precedent to support it, not one. I've asked Councilman Smith's office, how are you calculating this 50 percent, and how did you determine we didn't meet our mark? Uh, no response, no code section, nothing. It is almost like it's arbitrary and capricious, which which bothers me. Secondly, what bothers me... Could it be arbitrary without being capricious? <laughs> I guess. Okay, thank the, you. Uh, the second thing that bothered me is, is that the, uh, the city's website has a number of pages on how to establish a bid, much information on the bids, but there is a one-liner on how to disestablish one. And the one line is basically... Bids are not permanent institutions. There's very little guidance on how to get rid of one, which means government likes to build on government, but government does not like to disestablish itself. And that's one of the problems that we've had. Now, I'm a member of this bid, and I've been in that Chatsworth area for quite a while, and I have to say, 
what I see is what's happening in other cities that people are complaining about, where the little guy at the bottom that's paying into the system, as you can see, to establish it is a whole lot easier than it is to disestablish it. We can't even determine what the procedure is to disestablish. But the little guy that's paying in gets lip service. They don't benefit from the system at all. All they see is a bill and money going out the door. And that's money in hard economic times that the people that I've spoken with, easily over 100, they would rather have that money to spend on gasoline. They'd rather have that money to spend on food for their families. They're not getting a bang for their buck. On top of that are the things that the bid is spending money on. This bid carried over $30,000 from the previous year. For what? If it's not spending the money, it should at least reduce the revenues that it's charging. Why does this bid need a war chest, and what are they going to do with it? My fear is that war chest is going to somehow get bled out if people aren't keeping an eye on it. Sorry, that's, I guess. John Lee, thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was you. Sorry. Oh, thank you. R. Grace Rodriguez. Thank you, Council. Good afternoon. My name is Renee Rodriguez, and I'm also a member involuntarily in the bid. And I'd like to point out to the Council that one of the things that's completely lacking from the code is any kind of oversight over what the bid does with the money that they do collect. The money that's being collected is going personally to benefit individual members of the bid, which is a violation of the street and highway code that talks about the purpose of the bid. In this instance, you have an organization that has installed benches along the Devonshire Corridor, and those benches have become an eyesore and they've become a graffiti attractant. There's $10,000 that's being spent a year to clean up those benches every year on benches that nobody can use. Why? Because Devonshire is a fast-speed corridor. It's 40 miles an hour through most of it, 45 in some areas. It is not safe to sit on those benches per se. Additionally, there's a website that the organization sponsors, but to get top billing on that website, you better be on the board because from what I've seen, if you go to chopchatsworth.bid.org, which is the one that's advertised on the benches, you see the top slots promoted are the same people that are board members. If you go to shopchatsworth.com, it's a different website where everybody seems to be listed. However, you've got to pay an additional sum of money to have any kind of premier listing other than a very plain listing, which would be very difficult to find. Additionally, Your Honor, <laughs> Council Members, I was it's, it was extreme. I, I joined the bid and I became a board member for a year. And what I heard was a committee looking for ways to spend money because they had it, simply because they had it. And one of the things they're spending money on this year, the proposal, and this is why I'm continuing to be opposed and why I quit, is they want to spend money on this $30,000 archway that's going to do what? Announce you've arrived in Chatsworth? I mean, come on, you don't know you're there when you step onto the Devonshire Corridor. And that's going to become nothing more than an eyesore and it doesn't attract business. The activities that that the bid participates in do not promote business for the businesses. It's capital improvements for the business people that own property yeah. there and not for the business members. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Lou Villager. Yeah. Hi. Thank you for your time. Um, my name is Lou Villager. Uh, I have a small business in Chatsworth. I've been there for about seven years. And um, I attended that July 7th meeting that was mentioned before. And uh, that was the first time in, the, in my six years in Chatsworth that I met anybody that was in favor of this bid. Um, you know, just striking up a conversation at a gas station, everybody standing around saying, oh, yeah, that thing's awful. Somebody should get rid of it. This is six or seven years ago. Um, my impression is that nobody's had the diligence to go through the red tape. Um, it's kind of a moot point to me whether you disestablish it this year, because I'm confident that we can get 80 to 90 percent of the signatures. We just weren't aware that we were going to have to be hitting a moving target. And by moving target, I mean this, this thing about getting a petition and then turning in the petition with what we believe are over 50 percent and then giving the opposition time to go around and, for lack of a better term, strong arm certain people into um, reversing their decisions. How can you not understand if you're given something that says, I vote to disestablish the bid, how can you later say that you didn't understand that? Um, and I don't know what techniques are being used. When I attended that July 7th meeting, one of the board members of the bid came up to me afterwards and offered to waive my fees if I dropped my opposition of it. Um, I don't know if that is, you know, my, my concern is that 
that could be done on a larger scale once they get the names of our petitions. So I would like the council, uh, sorry, the committee to consider what protection could be given to us to make sure that that doesn't happen. But um, basically, there's one other thing I want to say. It's not just the little guy versus the big guy. It's that Deventure is the main drag. And so the businesses in the front that have storefronts obviously benefit, but most of us who are in the back um, and out of sight are just supporting the rest. And for that reason, you know, I hope you decide to disestablish it, if not this year, then next year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kevin Healy? Sorry. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I'm Kevin Healy, and I'm the current president of the Chatsworth Bid. The bid has been in operation since 1999. I have been a board member of the bid since that time. Um, I want to thank uh, Ms. Pastor for, for laying out the chronology of what was going on here. Um, bottom line is that our, our, our bid is, is in the business of community enhancement. It is not out to promote business for individual uh, people. Um, we don't strong on anybody. Jim, I, would, um, I know you were there at the, at the February meeting. I, I would love to know who made that promise to you because it did not happen. Um, I have invited my opposition to become part of our process. We meet twice a month uh, for public meetings, and uh, we have elections once a year. We have invited the opposition to become part of this process, which they politely declined. Um, I, I don't know what to say uh, other than that, that this, this individual, this uh, business that we're in promotes businesses, all the stakeholders of, of the, the corridor. We do it through a, a directory, through a website, two websites as a matter of fact. We have a marketing card called the Gold Card Program where stakeholders can sign up and offer services, discounts, um, specials, whatever they need to do. They can go on the website and do the same thing at no cost. The cost of the website, as a matter of fact, was, uh, was redone last year, and it cost the stakeholders nothing. Um, we, we have a cleanup of, of trees and benches and uh, tree wells, and, and that cost the stakeholders relatively nothing. For the most part, the, the uh, assessment is $360 a year. That's 30 bucks a month for security, for jobs, and for um, <coughs> duplication. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Eric Pampalom. Thank you. Go Thank you. Um, so I'd just like to, to say that, you know, I, I understand uh, that a number of these people have been here for a number of years in the community. The, I've been in the community for 40 years. I grew up there. Uh, I own a business there. My parents own a business there. Other people on, on, in the community own a business there. Very, very community involved. Um, I'm, part, I'm on the board at the um, Chatsworth Neighborhood Council. Um, I, I work with the Kiwanis. I work with the Rotary. I work with a lot of, of community and business-minded organizations. Um, one thing that uh, I haven't seen is any of the individuals in opposition to our, our bid at, the, at any of these community meetings. I personally went out and asked a number of the different um, businesses in the, in the area um, if they would consider to sign um, a withdrawal of their petition. A number of the different businesses said, uh, and not all of them, but a number of them said, we didn't even know we signed it. We didn't know what we were signing. So that was uh, an indication that uh, whatever tactics the, the opposition used, um, they weren't clear with the people that they were, they were going to. It's fine. We, we, we actually got some withdrawals of that, and, and, and that was good. We have actually in the last year restructured uh, a lot. And a lot of the things that the opposition uh, was complaining about, I personally joined the bid because I had the same complaints. I thought that there was some wasteful spending going on. I thought things weren't getting done effectively. Um, some of the stuff that they addressed with us in the first time we met, uh, we had actually already completed. Things like they, one thing they complained about was the website. And we had actually done and, and eliminated the cost around that. So 
thank you for your time and uh, I'll let the next person speak. Oh, thank you for your time. Um, Ronald Shulkin. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, my name is Ronald Shulkin. I'm a certified public accountant. I've been in the bid quarter since 1991. I'm currently the treasurer of the bid, and I'd like to bring up two points. The opposition talked about the benches, and their fear is they're too close to the curb. Unfortunately, we had to abide by city regulations and get permits to put those benches down, and those benches were placed according to city ordinances as how far away from the curb they can be. The other thing the opposition complained about was a war chest of $30,000. It happens to be needed simply because we get funded from the city three, maybe four times a year, and that's it. So whatever so-called war chest of funds that we have, we stretch out un until we get the next uh, supplement from the city. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you much. Uh, Nick. Uh, I think there's a letter missing. I don't know. Is this Montano? Is that Nicholas? Nicolas. Okay, you forgot the L. <laughs> yeah. I can. <laughs> Gentlemen, Senorita, um, I'm here to talk uh, in 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 for the bid. Uh, I've been in the, in in Chatsworth for for over 40 years. Uh, I've been very involved in the community. Uh, I'm also a member of the, uh, the, the Kiwanis Club of Chatsworth. And uh, we, the main thing that we focus on in the bid is, is, is community improvement. Um, the bid uh, stands for uh, uh, service and it stands for, for uh, beautification of the city. If without the bid's uh, services, we wouldn't have some of the things that we have now. We wouldn't have uh, people picking up the streets. We wouldn't have graffiti removals there. We wouldn't have uh, uh, folks take, you know, spending their own time to uh, to to beautify our our, our town. Um, as far as the website's concerned, we've sent letters. We've uh, we've uh, we've uh, let the public know that they do have an opportunity to to put their their business ad in the website prominently or not prominently. Most of the businesses that aren't on the website just did they just choose not to or they just don't know when or they don't know anything about the bid we've been trying to communicate with our with our with our uh, with our clients uh, for the past two years and uh, we have been getting some good some positive feedback but I believe the bid uh, is essential to the to the Chatsworth corridor uh, without it um, we wouldn't be able to uh, to do the businesses that would do the business that we're doing now um, there are some town, some uh, some companies that that aren't on the main street, but that's one of the things that the bid tries to do is show uh, shine them out for the for the uh, for for the clients, so they we can build businesses. The the bid also provides jobs for the area uh, because we do hire out to 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 do some of the services that we offer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have no more cards. Um, let me uh, let me try and uh, try to bring this all together. Um, I'm looking at the state uh, state code, uh, and it does have a provision for protests uh, that uh, that uh, guides our consideration here. And that is essentially it sets the 50% uh, threshold, and it defines it as 50%. Um, let's see, if written protests are received from the owners of businesses in the proposed area, which will pay 50% or more of the assessments proposed to be levied, and protests are not withdrawn so as to reduce the protest to less than that 50%. No further proceedings to create the specified parking and business improvement area or to levy the proposed assessment as contained in the resolution of intention shall be taken for a period of one year from the date of the finding of a majority protest by civil counsel. The, a majority, therefore, being uh, the amount of money received, uh, not the number of businesses. Um, 
And that's my reading. And, and Mr. Kokorian, you're the lawyer. And we, the city attorney is, is not present. Is that the city clerk's reading as well? Exactly. It's okay, 50% so, of so the uh, to be collected. So the, what we have before us, the, it, could, it could frankly be one business um, that pays more than 50% of the dues, and they would, they would have to agree to a disestablishment. Exactly. Um, so the city, the, the city clerk has to determine whether or not the, uh, the signators who are eligible signators, the owners of the businesses who are paying, uh, equate to more than 50% of the fees that are paid into the uh, bid. And in, this case and in this case, the city clerk has determined that it's 43%. Um, that means that uh, unless the council member uh, wanted the the city council to remove its, um, uh, there's even some question of, as to whether we can even do that. Uh, in other words, there's a question. I, I'm, I wish the lawyer were here because um, uh, unless the the only way to disestablish that I see before us today is if the council member would agree and then the city attorney would have to determine that they can revoke the action that we took to establish this in the first place. It, it, does that sound reasonable, Mr. Kukurian? He's the lawyer, like I said. He's a lawyer too. <laughs> when a lawyer needs to talk to another lawyer. Um, but anyway, so, so here's uh, what I'm trying to say is that um, Look, it, we've done dozens and dozens of bids all over the city of Los Angeles. Most council members, in fact, have bids. I think all of them do. Um, I think there's hundreds, actually. Is we, it? We actually How many? 38 bids. Yeah, yeah okay. 38 bids. Dozens and dozens. Mm -hmm. um, uh, not all of them are going to have uh, a unanimous support and, you know, everybody uh, hold hands and sing Kumbaya. Um, uh, but the purpose of these is to uh, create a situation where the businesses have more ownership of the uh, public areas so that they can improve the business opportunities in that particular area. The bottom line is that there's going to be some disagreement. Uh, some people are going to like what they do and some people are not going to like what they do. It seems to me that Mr. Smith is troubled because the city clerk has said only 43%, in other words, a minority uh, of the people paying the, the uh, levy, or if that's the appropriate term, are, are uh, wanting to disestablish, or at least have demonstrated that they want to disestablish. Uh, so I don't believe it's in the power of this committee to disestablish, be because you've ne neither got the support of the council member to disestablish, uh, nor do you have the 50 percent threshold. So uh, without being an attorney and without having the city attorney present, my uh, personal recommendation to the community is if you want to disestablish, you have to get the 50 percent threshold uh, or um, get the council member to introduce a motion, but even then I, I would say that we may still have to establish the 50% threshold under state law um, because we have no clarity of that. Did, did you want to clarify something? Council Member Kelly, Council Member Smith's office. Just, uh, I just wanted to ask that uh, on record that in the meantime, since I don't want the, 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 the opposition to wait for our city, clerk, city attorney to come down with that decision, that they move forward and the city clerk provide a clear, concise list of wh who is authorized to sign so they have a clear understanding when they go out and get their petition that they get, you know, a clear, you know, understanding so they're not getting it signed by Joe Smith when it needs to be. Yeah, what they, would, what they would have to get is not only a list of who, but how much weight exactly. they carry. So have one to. business might carry uh, two shares, another business might carry six, Correct. and another one might just barely have one. So, uh, so, while we so I, that's, a, that's a fair thing. If you can, can you compile that for the um, community? It, um, the list would be the list of the, the businesses to be assessed, and we can, we can provide that list. 
Yeah, uh, look, it, I, I, I've known Mr. Smith long enough to know he's a huge uh, supporter of business and what he wants is for uh, there to be true business opportunity improvements in the area and the, um, uh, uh, so on the one hand, uh, the opposition, um, uh, uh, I, I think the city clerk can do without direction from this committee, uh, provide that information. There's, there's not, no privacy issues? That's not a privacy issue. Okay, so they can provide that information to the opposition and you can uh, uh, strike up your campaign, choose to strike up your campaign or just wait till May and strike up a, a larger campaign to, to stop it at that point. Uh, but I would also say that, that it would be a challenge to uh, uh, the chairman, Mr. Hewling, and and, uh, and the rest of the, the board uh, to meet the meet meet their standard, whatever that standard may be, I essentially you're in a campaign. <laughs> that's that's, how, that's where I, how I look at this. It's a campaign to show that you are providing uh, worth, uh, value out of the bid, uh, at least for each uh, a share, the 300 and X dollars. Uh, but some people might be much more than that. So uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't particularly care for that uh, valuation. But um, I think... Um, I think that's the challenge before us. Uh, the uh, the report from the city clerk recommends that we receive and file this, uh, which is consistent with Mr. Um, Mr. Smith's uh, uh, recommendation at this point. Uh, but that doesn't mean, you know, we're not making a judgment on the quality or the lack of quality of this bid. That's up to you. The, you are paying for it. And uh, and you certainly have the right to uh, uh, to uh, go through the process of of uh, stopping it. Um, but uh, at this point, the only determination that that the committee can make, based on the information we have from the city clerk, is that you have not met the 50% standard. Now, if there's a challenge to that, then uh, I think we we absolutely have to get uh, the city attorney involved uh, to make that. Uh, uh, analysis for us to consider. But right now, um, I really don't think we have any other options. Mr. Kerkorian, do you have any? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, I think your, your summary is exactly right. Uh, and there seems to be a prevailing sentiment of anti-disestablishmentarianism, <laughs> which is oh, a word I've it. waited a lifetime to use, so I couldn't miss the opportunity. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> the longest word in the English language. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but I think you're exactly right. Um, the, the, there's a narrow question that's before us today, which is whether or not the assessed a majority of the assessed value of the bid has uh, appropriately, correctly um, voted to disestablish. It sounds as though that has not happened. Uh, it could still happen, and um, there's this is not a decision that's made with prejudice against further actions that opponents might take uh, and that the council office might or might not agree with. So, uh, But for today, what we have before us is an ina in inadequate petition, and I think that ends the, ends the, ends the question for us. Let me, uh, let me ask one question. Uh, is the, uh, since I, I, don't, I haven't read the whole statute, uh, and I doubt that the statute delineates the process, is is there anything that suggests that you have to start over, or is there a, pr a particular period of we would start of over? And the period in is the during period? the um, when we when they submit the annual report that goes before council. No, that's not what I'm asking. Well, what, I what I'm asking is, if they got 43 percent, can they keep that 43 percent and get an additional 7 percent, or do they have to start, start all over? It was and, start over. And where's and the basis for what is the uh, legal basis for starting all over? Uh, the the legal well, the legal basis is um, is um, that I'm trying to figure out how to say it. I, I have to look up the code section on that. But I mean, even when you look at the petitions that are submitted for elected office, each year you turn in, or each time you renew, you turn in new petitions. So um, these petitions. Submitted, I'm not talking about that. I know, but I'm just saying I'm that's, about the only, that's an example. The protests are turned in within a certain period of time. Um, and if you under turn statute? over the page before, under, un the page before. The page that, before, okay. She's, okay, um, let's see. Let's protest against the establishment. Okay. And so basically what happens is during the 30-day uh, notice period, we mail out notices um, and 
okay. for the public hearing. Okay, so there is, it's, uh, the, 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 the key word is time fixed, yes. and, and that is in the statute. So bottom line is you have to start all over on your protest if you want to... Uh, if you want to disestablish. So when the annual planning report comes back to renew for the 2011-12 year, which um, right. maybe maybe around May or June, they can submit the protest at that time. Okay, I, I think that's the direction of the committee. What what uh, you know, Chatsworth is a nice community. Uh, Val Kilmer and uh, and uh, who's that other guy that came out of uh, Chatsworth High? And you know, um, I, although I do have to say anecdotally. Uh, representing uh, Pacoima, Panorama City, and, and Lakeview Terrace, uh, and other communities, I don't really have to go uh, all the way to Chatsworth to get Mexican food or, or soul food, so uh, I apologize for not going there very often. But uh, um, So I think that w w where we're at is that um, um, we really don't have the authority. Uh, and again, we're without prejudice, as was explained, we don't have the authority because uh, the, our official counter, the city clerk, has determined that uh, you did not meet the standard uh, for uh, disestablishment. And so with that, uh, this committee would recommend uh, uh, receive and file this report. Okay. Did we Council cover all the items? I believe you want to ap approve the January 5th report. Approve the, which, which the amended would. report right. uh, by the city report. clerk. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Um, any other items before us? Okay. This this uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.